In my school, we focus a lot on basics, and I know we say that all the time, but I have a tendency to break everything down to its most minute form. My, my philosophy is if you understand what you're doing, then you understand what the enemy is doing wrong and what you're doing right. When something happens, like you get hit with that one strike, you should be able to figure out why you got hit. It's not some mystery. So if your foundation is good and your basics are good and you have a good understanding of basic principles, then you should be able to figure out and then it's just figuring out what the counter theory or the counter technique was and why it, why it went wrong. That way you'll continue to improve instead of just doing the same things over again, over and over again. Uh, today what I'm going to cover is a couple basic Manus theories. Have we ever heard that uh, Manus emphasized speed? You've heard that? Yes. Someone? Participation type thing. Yes? Yes. Yes. yes? yes. Has anyone heard the phrase technique can be matched by technique, but nothing can match speed? Yes. Have heard that Manus yes. theory? Yes. Yes. Gotta read your Manus books. Okay, so we're gonna do a real basic exercise. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make two rows, but I got two rolls. One, no one gets hurt. And two, everyone shows respect. Okay? Um, and things happen, but I'm a stickler for that. Okay, so I think we're not going to have a problem with any, anyone. But if we'll pair off and make two rolls, one facing this way, one facing that way, pair off with someone of comparable height. Just so you know, but this is all this side of the row is going to do. This is all. We're going to stand toe to toe. Even stance in the middle. Don't be doing this. Okay, right in the middle. And Steve, all I'm going to do is tap you right here. So you got this? Okay, you can have your hands up. Now we're going to work on the speed theory. Okay, speed theory, two, two components. The speed of my hand and his ability to perceive my attack. That's all we're working, that's all we're thinking about, right? So those defending, you're working on picking it up. Those attacking, you're working on speed. Steve's gonna hold his hands higher because he wants to block wherever you're comfortable. You ready? I'm gonna try to do it fast and tap him on top of the head. You're ready, right, yeah. Steve? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I hit Steve, right? Okay, we're going to play with that. When you got that, and it's too easy, we're going to shift back a little bit more. Steve's ready, and he's going to be... And that's all we're going to do. Don't whack the heck out of the partner. It's a little tap. Play with that for now. We're going to move on to something else. Okay, stop for a second. <laughs> hitting. The majority of you should be hitting. So Steve is ready. He's lightning fast. Two components. One is the speed of my hand, and two, I said, what is the other one? We weren't paying attention, were we? His, speed to perceive it. His ability to perceive it. So a lot of times this is what we do, and I will magnify this. We do this. Did you see what I did? Yeah, mm -hmm. the body. So at the body. Here's another thing we do. You see these? Here's the other thing we do. <laughs> yes, right? Okay, so the second component, I don't want him to perceive me that I'm going to move, right? So Steve is ready. He's lightning quick. You ready? Live. Boom. You just go from nothing to hitting. From nothing to hitting. Now, Steve's putting his hand across like this, making it hard for me, so you just have to come in faster. Okay? All right? Do that real quickly without moving. Just try to be a statue here. You're practically asleep. And then you hit. Okay? Go. Try it. Okay. you cut like 90%. You already posted Okay. Speed theory. Steve is not. Steve cannot move faster than me hitting him. Okay. He can't react to it because it's action reaction. Okay. So there's a thing called the Nuda cycle. Observe, orient, decide, and act. So that's what has to happen every time. We are trained enough that we make that time frame very small. That Uda cycle becomes very small because 
we do this like three million times, right? You're seeing say, go, go there for two hours and do this and block, right? So, so Steve won't block this. You ready, Steve? You're lightning fast. You're ready to go. Okay, he will not block this, but now he is. But I'm going to move his hand a little bit here. That's all I'm going to do. And Steve is going to focus right here. Okay. Now I said focus. I didn't say look, right? Focus. Look here. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. There's a broken record. Right there. Focus. Got it? Don't let it go. Got it? Should be blurry. No, you're looking away. Bend your knees a little bit. There you go. Got it? Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Don't let that go. Okay, I'm going to attack. Hang on to it. Did we just make Steve five times faster? How did that work? Anyone? Big trick, the big secret. Here it comes. Get ready. There's two forms of vision. You have acute vision and peripheral vision. We've heard of this? Mm -hmm. Your acute vision you use to read. You read a book, you use your acute vision. Some of you read a lot, and you start to use your peripheral vision. You're that good at reading, so you scan. But for the most of us, you have to read word for word. Maybe half a sentence at best. Use your acute vision. Your acute vision is connected to your conscious mind. Conscious mind move fast or slow? Slow. slow. Very slow. Your peripheral vision is connected to your subconscious mind. Fast or slow? Fast. Fast. Anyone run up a flight of steps? Do you ever stare at each step? No. You never look at the steps. When a ball comes and it's going to hit you in the head, wow, we blocked that. That was my kung fu. <laughs> <laughs> that was your peripheral vision. So what I made Steve do, and I set him up, by the way, if Steve is ready, is I said, I'm going to hit you with this hand. Well, he's looking at my hand, just like a lot of you were. I'm making you use what? Acute Your acute vision. Fast or slow? Slow. Slow. He's moving like molasses. I can hit him all day. I take that away from him. I take his speed. I don't care how fast he is. I cannot physically move faster than his subconscious mind. Now, his technique may be off, but it's not. It's fine. So what I did was we focused on a spot 12 inches from the center of his torso. What I'm doing is I'm trying to program his peripheral vision. You focus on a place that doesn't exist. You activate your peripheral vision. If you get nervous, if you get distracted, you may deviate from that, and that will get you back to acute vision, and then the guy's popping you. A lot of people do this when they get hit with two or three blows, and then their field of vision. Experienced fighters do this all the time. The problem is they don't know that they're doing it. Anyone that's fought at any time knows that they're doing this, understands this, but doesn't understand it to this, this degree. I look over here when I'm touching with my students. It's a bad habit, but I just drift off over here. The reason we go to the center is because it's more like the center point between the, the legs and the hands, so you're more likely to pick up the hands and the feet. But it doesn't matter what you do. But you, if you look over there, you know, um, switch sides. Look over. At him. Look over at him. Put your hands up. Same thing. See, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. He's using his peripheral vision. The only reason we want it in the center is because we want to catch the hands and the feet. We understand that. Yes. We're going to take their speed away. We're going to steal that away. The, th the first theory was speed. The second theory is focus theory. You have to concentrate. And then we'll do something else. Go! <laughs> is it working? I'm just kind of trying to There you go. <laughs> is it working? Okay, if it's not working, it's generally that you are not concentrating and you'll look, that you're really just looking over here going, I can see it out of the corner of my eye, and that's not what you want. You will not see the arm. 
Trip, do you see an arm coming at you, or you just see motion and you know where it's going? Motion. motion. If you're seeing an arm coming at you, you're probably not using your focus theory. Okay. All right, so now we're going to take the focus theory away. Steve's the willing volunteer, right? Okay. So, we figured out that I can tap him, but then we figured out that he can counter me because he uses what? Focus theory, and he said, so he's got it figured out, right? You got it figured out, Steve? Yes? He's concentrating. <laughs> okay, so he has focus theory, so I cannot possibly hit him on the head. Okay, so are you ready? Hit him on the head? What I do? Do a faint. Faint. Difference between a faint and a faint. Here's a fake. A fake, they go, boom. It's an actual attack, and it's directed, and they see it. Okay. Actually, the more experienced someone is, the less they're going to go to a fake, and they'll react to the faint, because the faint is the precursor to a fake. So all he saw is the shoulder, and he knows that that is the beginning of the attack. But I sucked him in, right? So he's going, see, so ready? I went like this, boom, he didn't react. Okay, so I took that away. It's also a bridging theory. We know about bridging, and I don't have time to go into that today. But I'm taking it away. All I really did was I took away this focus theory. That's all I did. And there's a lot of ways. So Steve's ready to go. He's totally in control. He's got his focus theory because he's not going to let me hit him. And I go, and I hit him. And I didn't go very fast. Okay? All right? Hey, Steve. You got it this time? Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a trick. And hopefully you'll block me. Because that means I was a good teacher. If you put your hand here, you can't see. You're blocking your own attack. So everyone does it different for different reasons, but humor me and my school. I want this open. Okay, that way anything that comes in is very easy. So now you have a clear field of vision. You're going to pick up everything you're going to see. Okay, so he's got his focus theory. Now I'm going to take it away. You ready, Steve? <laughs> Took his focus theory away? Yes, I stole it from him. There's about basically 10 different things that you can do. You can do distraction, you can do timing. Okay, I could, I could hide it. So you, you ready, Steve? I'm going to hide my hand behind his arm. Oh, didn't work. Steve's got it, he's concentrating. He likes fakes. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to play with is distraction, fakes, and fakes. Make your fakes very small. If Steve is totally focused, now we're going to have one element, and I'm going to give you this. How am I doing for time, Steve? We're doing just fine. What are we looking at? Oh, you have 20 minutes. Okay. All right. We're going to do that, and then I'm going to take that away from you. So we're going to do theory, counter theory counter that theory, and then the counter to that theory. That worked. <laughs> and faints work. Yes. The twitch, the duck wiggle, right? <laughs> All those little things, the distraction. Okay, you probably, it's probably through some timing in there. Okay, so who's winning right now? The guys that are hitting, right? Okay, so now we gotta give something back to the guys that are defending. All right, so Steve's ready. Okay, now Steve, get in your fighting suits. He's ready. You know your focus theory pretty good? As much as you could in 10 minutes? <laughs> Now we're going to do something different. We're going to create a sphere around you. Okay. We'll call it, uh, 
imaginary gold bell, okay? This fear, okay, right around here, put your hands up, only comes out to about here. That's it. All right, get your focus there because you're looking a little too high. So that sphere, he is not going to react to anything outside that sphere. All right, do you understand that, see? So you're looking a little high. Okay, so if I do this, no reaction, right? The wall's right here. It's like a wall. So I can do this. I can twitch. Ah! Yeah, sorry. You're breaking the rules. <laughs> if, it come, if it doesn't come into your little sphere, you're safe. Nothing will happen to you. Ah! <laughs> Good? Okay, kind of got him into it. Let's see if he sticks. So, I'm going to try to hit him. We'll, we'll check his focus there, just make sure it's there. Yeah, it's there. Let's see if his sphere is still there. There. Okay. Ah! Come on. Back? So he should be winning. So defend him shy. So what did I do? I took all that junk. Can I use the word crap? <laughs> all that crap that's happening out here, the jerk, the wiggle, the boom, the distraction, the timing, the little duck over here. <laughs> took it away. Because he's focused on two things. His focus theory, okay, trying to keep it and do a good job, and his fear. Can I hurt him if I don't go into that space? No. It's like me fighting without my arms. So you're cutting all the nonsense that he's doing, so you are controlling your defense, not him. When you're not controlling your defense is when you react to that person and they make you react. Okay? So I want to control this. But he's not going to let me control him and what he does and what he thinks and where his mind is. Okay? So try it. Remember, this is a very mental thing. Okay? It's not as much a physical thing. You really have to work on your focus theory. Things should be blurry. And know where that little sphere is, which is where? Right outside your arms, little, you're in a little cylinder. And if it doesn't come in there, try not to react to it. Go. I had the hard there. <laughs> it's a hard thing because you're doing something different, but, but you really have to focus. And that sphere thing is actually hard because you really have to concentrate to do it until it becomes part of you. <laughs> You better grab I I'm over here, and I'm usually talking to someone. I do this thing, it's not like, oh, I, you know, it's actually better for me. I'm just talking to someone to focus somewhere else. It's hard because I can't get a balance. But it is a center axis point. So I'm guessing it's a lot of theory, though. I think it's a lot of theory. That's not fair. But you'll think about it less if you stress less or too high. It should be blurry. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's right. I'll take it. If it's not, then you're using your uh. and you're defeating the person. Now remember, your spirit right here. This is the wall. It's got across the wall, so all that wiggling, punching in things, don't mean anything. So I've got a hole here, and I think sometimes you've got a hole back here. Because I'm so used to looking here, and I lost that person. Is it working for it? Are you playing with it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you do it. 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 You
what you did was a very structured exercise, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean it's fighting. Either side, do you notice that one side can win, and then I give you something else, and then the other side wins? So at any point, you can win. My Steve, my, my Vanna White here? Okay. So, so, the gist of it is, can you remember that I gotta do that, I gotta do that? No, if you learn your focus theory and your little sphere, two little things that I gave you, okay? Then you got it. You don't need to worry about it. The trick for you on the offensive side is getting that person off of it. We don't have time to do it, but I'm going to show you some things that will affect his focus there. Okay, so Steve's going to, I'm doing the same one little exercise. But Steve's ready, right? right? You can adjust to me if you want. Okay, so what did I do? I moved, I changed position. Okay, so he had it down. He had the defense, I can't touch him, he's invincible, he's Superman, and then I, I threw in some kryptonite, right? I did something different that took him out of the two things that he was supposed to do. Okay, so you can do it by changing positions, gaining an angle. When people move, they have a tendency to lose it. So they're here, they're good, I'm still, okay? And someone moves, and they go. And what just happened? Just went out the window. Instead of, boom, it's just this vague space. Okay, so Steve's going to set, and I change angle to gain an angle, and he adjusts. But he has, he doesn't have to do anything. His footwork is good. If he, Steve changes size, if I change his size, and he adjusts my change in size, change size, Steve. Boom, he kept it pretty good, except he moved forward a little bit. Right, which wasn't good, but we're going to change again. And he's cautious, and he's there, and he knows, right? What you will see is you'll know when it's time to go. He'll tell you. You can just look at someone. You, you'll see his body. Good to go. What did he do? There was a tiny movement that I saw. He bounced. He, he shifted. He shifted his weight and he went like this, boom, and he lost it. Let's see if we can make it disappear. He did it again. Watch. Okay, so what does he need to do to fix it? Sit. When you shift, slide. And look, slide and look. But don't pop up at all. Try to keep your head as even as possible. And we're going to try to exaggerate a little more. <clears throat> and is he still popping up? A little bit? See how he shifts from one leg to the other? <clears throat> He's transferring his weight back and forth. You can see it. Okay. That means when he does shift forward, very hard to defend because you're moving forward. You're stuck. You can't go back. Defense is really hard. It's a very small move. And I'm going. That's what I'm going to go that second, because I saw him shift. So if I was being aggressive, I would wait for that. I would make, he's going to make the mistake. And do you see it? Yeah. So, you don't want to do this. You want to do this. Even, the weight stays in the middle, because we know monkey stance right from praying madness. And we just move. I'm going to let Steve cheat. Steve, when you shift and I try to circle on you, you're going to move, but you're going to do one thing different. Because if I give you the theory, you get to give you the counter theory, right? And so on and so on. This time, when you adjust to my move, instead of just circling and keeping the same range, you're going to circle, but you're going to move about four inches back. Okay? He just took it away from me, didn't he? So any mistake he made, he just took it away. All right? That's all I got. Well, I got a lot more, but that's all the time I got. <laughs> all right. I hope you got something out of it. It's a little different than probably what everyone expected, but I wanted to just show you just a basic theory. You can play that all day long. My big thing is I capitalize on people's mistakes. Okay, that's just the way I'm wired. I'm a counterfighter. I analyze. I will see the mistakes they make. The position of the arm and what's vulnerable there. The position of the body, the hip. And all these little details that they do, and I'll wait for them to make a mistake, 
and it'll be a very minute one, whether it be shifting the weight, or they'll change size and bring their foot forward instead of back, or they'll circle to the outside with their lead foot instead of their back foot, and that's what I capitalize. So those are the same basics. You can do that counter theory over and over again. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you.